This is On the Block with Strick and Austin. Nebraska Basketball Hall of Famer and nine-year NBA vet, Eric Strickland. Strickland for three! And you're going to go out of here at the Big 8. Coming at you live from the heart of Lincoln, America, on air and online at theticketfm.com. Presented by Nipco. This is On the Block with Strick and Austin. Welcome into a stream only edition of On the Block. Austin Norman and Husker Hall of Famer, nine year NBA vet Eric Strickland with you here. Plenty of hoops to talk today. Stick with us uh, for a lot of hoops conversation. We'll start off with some Nebraska basketball headlines that pick up another edition in the transfer portal uh, just last night. So we'll talk through the addition of Gavin Griffiths here in just a sec. Lots to get to in the NBA as well. A couple of play-in results from out in the Western Conference, as well as a player suspended for life for gambling. John Tay Porter, brother life. of Michael Porter Jr. Yeesh. So that is a, a lifetime ban from the NBA. We will not be seeing you Anytime soon, Jonte Porter. Big thanks to Nebco for sponsoring our show. Check them out at nebcoinc.com. Hiring for a couple of their different companies all across the state of Nebraska since 1908. 402-464-5685, the number for you if you want to join the show. If you're watching on stream, Facebook, YouTube, Twitch, and Twitter, comments are up and active for you as well. Uh, Stricky, let's start with the news from yesterday. Gavin Griffiths, a, a former top 50, a top 40 recruit, according to some sites out of high school uh, in the 2023 class uh, played at Rutgers dropped 10 points on Nebraska uh, here in Lincoln committed to the Huskers last night, six, 895 pound guy um, <laughs> shot right about 30% from three on the year, but 37% from three, the last couple months of the season. What do you make of this addition to the Nebraska basketball roster? Well, <clears throat> Again, there's a lot of things that we talk about. They had a pretty good game against us, had like 10 points and, um, but we talk about Nebraska, and I think we talked about it off air. We said that right now, to me, Nebraska has a lot of stake. It's not necessarily Omaha Stakes. It isn't Ruth Chris. It isn't, uh, you know, Flemings. It isn't Mahogany. It isn't that great age type of state, you know, that you're, you know, when you go in, you know, that has been aged for like 40 years or whatever the case may be, a 50-year age. No, none of that. This is Applebee's. I think it's a good get. It's solid to go into Chili's and get a steak. It's, it's, it's okay to go into Cheddar's and get a nice steak, but it's not that prime beef. Now, the fact that one thing I do like about it, Austin, is you got them for some time, hopefully. I mean, the, mm -hmm. I mean, the just way the kids are jumping in these days, the way the kids are jumping in these days and out these days, the crazy part about that is um, <clears throat> they, they could jump back in there next year. <clears throat> right. It'll go figure, right? Mm -hmm. um, this is why I still think Eli Rice may be one of the, let me be quiet, <laughs> um, most, I can't even say it. I don't, I want to say it, Austin, but I can't say it. <clears throat> you don't ever watch that movie? Um, with um one of the, he's a really good actor he played the mask jim carrey you ever watch this movie yes. there's a movie he had out right mm -hmm. it was him and one of his buddies now i'm speaking about eli rice at this point but i i, I, I want to say it in a different manner to me mm -hmm. and jope i want to say it to them in this manner but jim carrey had this movie out and these guys were uh he he was driving in his limo and he ends up walking in. He sees a beautiful lady. She ends up leaving her suitcase behind. He picks it up and he freaking figures out where she's at, follows her all the way to Vail, thinks she's in, he's in love with, or she's in love with him, and comes to find out he goes to this whole rigmarole. The name of that movie, Austin, I just wanted to set a little caveat of it, mm -hmm. was called Dumb and Dumber. Mm -hmm. Right now, Eli writes to me and Joe or some of the those guys, those they're they're like a combination of them, just a different version, and it just happened to be the Nebraska version, mm. right, of that movie. But I think getting Griffiths, another young gun, still hasn't fully developed in his body. But I love that he has great body control. I love that he, when he attacks the rim, he's 
and, you know, just watching film on him and, and getting an opportunity to see him when he, he, he knows how to create body contact and, you know, separation and still be able to finish. Like at the I, rim you're talking. Yes. <laughs> I haven't, I haven't seen, you know, like even guys like Bryce and those guys and Juwan, like in a lot of instances, I see them miss a lot of contacted and one opportunities. If you, if you know how to control your body, you can do so. But I've seen that in him. Like he's got that skill to do that. And so once he develops his body a little bit more, gets in the gym, he gets up to about that 210 range, mm. 215 range. I think he can get there, but he's got a quick release stroker. Like I like that about him too. And I like that he's young. They can keep him around. He'll be a good solid addition. He doesn't, he's a catch and shoot guy, mm -hmm. come off of screens, very CJ Wilcher ish, but just a bigger version to me. A little um, more pop, a little, more, little juice. Bit more pop and a quicker release. CJ, mm. CJ had a burner, but he just, he couldn't get it off because he didn't have a quick release. He had one of those set, those set motion, you know, no, no not jumpers, but he gets mm -hmm. it off pretty quick. And so yeah. I, I, I like that about him. You and I were watching some of the, the highlights side by side to, to form our impression of this, this guy, Gavin Griffiths, at the same time. And Rutgers ran some similar actions for him that Nebraska ran for C.J. Wilcher. So mm -hmm. I think you can pretty much slot him into C.J. Wilcher's role. Maybe a few more minutes. I mean, C.J. was a spot starter. And I like the idea of Gavin Griffiths as a starter strike because think of you have, you know, Raleigh Worcester's at the point. That's 6'3", six, 6'4". Six, now, if you go Bryce Williams at the two, that's 6'7". Griffiths at 6'8", Jawan at 6'8", and Rink Mast at 6'10", 6 6'11". 6 mm -hmm. That's a pretty good sized starting lineup. Yeah. Not overly athletic, um, but Griffiths can hit the boards. Worcester sure did. Um, we know Jawan can. So then it comes down to, okay, Bryce Williams and Rink Mast, are you willing to step up your game in rebounding to match everyone else on the roster? But even if there's no you know, true lockdown guy in that starting lineup, that's some pretty good size that Nebraska should be able to keep most guys in front of it just with length, right? So they're going to have to do it very, they're going to have to do it collectively, mm -hmm. defensively, and they're probably going to have to do uh, some mix and, mix and match type of stuff. You know, throw, throw some zone at them, throw some mm -hmm. trap at them, throw some, you know, some things, some wrinkles just to keep people off balance. To me, they look very much like a, a version of Wisconsin mm -hmm. now. Yeah. To me, it looks very much kind of like that. Not really anybody that's super athletic. I think Juwan's probably the most athletic guy you got on the team right now at this point. Uh, not unless I'm wrong. But now, listen, Griffiths can get up. He can do some things. He's still young to me, and he, he's got he's got some things that uh, I think he can still grow in some areas. Mm -hmm. uh, he, he he can put it. So, so to me, okay, if I can, if I can give you old schoolers an example of kind of what Griffiths is like, he's a less athletic, very similar style of handle to what Eric Pikowski was. Mm. So what Eric, one thing Eric could do is you knew he had a nice burner on him, but what Eric could do is he could put the, he could put it down like one or two dribbles to a mid range, one or two dribbles to a Euro finish one or two dribbles to a draw contact finish. That was er Eric was really good at that. Um, Eric in the open court can finish with the best of them. I think there, I mean, if they do that, but I don't, Nebraska doesn't seem to me that they do that. So we're, we're going to see, but he gives me that same type of vibe. You run out with him over commit. Um, he's, he's not going to get sped up on that aspect, but he'll read the situation and be able to get into the paint, create, get to a mid range. He's got, he's got versatility there. So Nebraska has added a, a point guard out of the transfer portal. Nebraska's added a, a wing or a two out of the transfer portal. It seems to me, Strick, they could use one more guard and maybe a rim protector. Do you think that's still gettable for this team in the portal? I, I think it starts to dwindle down. So what you're going to do is you're probably going to take flyers on, on developmental type guys. On a Matarjo from a different school. I, I think you want to get a young, hopefully you get a young version that you can keep around. Mm. Um, that has some years, you know, at this point, I don't think you're going to get a veteran that's going to have a high impact. You, you could go down into the mid major range and, and find something, but then those are hit or misses, right? It's not going to be, uh, you know, to me, let me throw this back at you. To me, do you think that rink mass 
Um, because the expectations for Rick Mass probably wasn't what he gave you last year. Hit or hit or just, you know, a ground ball. Mm. You know, is this a hit in a gap? <laughs> If you were talking baseball, which mm-hmm. freaking Nebraska blew, I, I'm, I'm, I watched that game. I'm so disappointed in that, man. I can, can't believe that they just uh, can't yeah. get done. I think Cal Perry was a little disappointed. Disappointed, He thought he could have got a couple of those calls just off the, off the edge of the plate. Mm-hmm. Uh, that he that he that he missed that caused some walks, but then there for a second I thought you said Calipari, and I'm like, what is John Calipari at oh, Husker baseball? You said Kyle Perry. Kyle Perry. Yeah. Yes, Kyle Perry. Yes. So yeah, man, I, that was very disappointing. Um, you know, Nebraska. I, I didn't mean to switch, but I'm just gonna, <laughs> I just had to talk about it. When Nebraska throwing out, uh, you know, the losing the last eight out of ten, and mm-hmm. in last I think ten out of twelve, 10 out maybe of 12, yeah. ten out of twelve, and it's like last eight out of nine or something like yeah. that. It's crazy. I mean, at Haymarket, they've just they've just did what they want. I'm I don't like that, man. That that's mm-hmm. one thing that upsets me more than anything. I get I get frustrated when I think about what Creighton does to us sometimes. Well, hey, guess what? We're going to keep talking about this. We got Evan Bland of the Omaha World Herald coming up next. Evan uh, covers Husker baseball, obviously Husker football as well. So we'll start with Husker baseball in a bit of a rut right now. Lost two out of three to Rutgers. Then the Creighton game streak you just mentioned. So we'll get Evan's thoughts on all things Husker baseball and some Husker football when we get back. Doors can be expensive. Are you keeping yours in the best condition possible? This is Cameron Hall with Doors Plus. Doors Plus is a locally owned business that prides itself on the fast, reliable, and friendly service. Doors Plus offers flexible scheduling so you can book an appointment that fits your busy day. My team and I will come out to your property, both commercial and residential, and provide you with the necessary information you need to make sure your garage door is in working and smooth condition. Give Doors Plus a call today at 402 590 5800 to book an appointment and learn more about our preventative maintenance plans. Doors Plus, garage doors, and more. Unearth the secret to long lasting tires at Treads Central Tire Pros, a league apart in commitment, service, and expertise. This isn't just about rubber meeting the road, but trust, safety, and surety converging in perfect harmony. This is where expectations are exceeded every time. Make your appointment today at Treads Central Tire Pros, just south of Cortland on Highway 77 or visit our website to explore our services. Remember, when it comes to tires, choose Tread Central Tire Pros because we tread differently. At Doan University, we build leaders, and that means your success and achievements come first. At Doan University, your future is uniquely yours, and our world-class liberal arts education is just the beginning. We invite you to schedule your campus visit and experience why Doan University will start you on your journey to your future career. Learn more by scheduling your personal campus visit today at doan.edu slash visit. See you soon. Hey, Nebraska. Register today for the 40th annual Cornhusker State Games, taking place July 11th through the 21st in Lincoln, Omaha, and other Nebraska communities. The Cornhusker State Games features 70 sports for athletes of all ages and abilities. Price increases are approaching, so register early and save. For details, go to CornhuskerStateGames.com. If you've experienced a sports injury, joint, or back pain, trust your care to Nebraska Orthopedic Center, a proud platinum partner of the Cornhusker State Games. Hi, my name is Molly Party. I'm a realtor with MP Dodge Real Estate. I'm a newly licensed agent and considered numerous brokerages before deciding on MP Dodge. I chose the company that gives me the most support in my new career, plus guidance and encouragement along the way. MP Dodge has a unique mentoring program for new agents. It's helped jumpstart my career and has a supportive management team and administrative staff. So if you're contemplating a career in real estate, look no further than MP Dodge. It will be the best decision you make. At Union Bank, people don't have your money. Your money has people. First home people, investment people, people people, people who answer the phone and your chats, dream car people, dream retirement people, driving your dream car in your dream retirement people, small business people, credit card people, and all the other people you need. At Union Bank, our people help you do more than you dreamed possible. So stop in and say hello. We can't wait to see you. Union Bank and Trust, member FDIC. Hello. 
Hello? Believe it or not, old phones are one of the most common pain points in offices today. Many of these phones are beyond repair because parts aren't available to fix outdated devices. Whether it's a traditional phone system or cloud-based VOIP technology, Hamilton Business Phones can help upgrade your connection. We make it easy to sync your office phone with yourself for seamless call handling, no matter where you work. If your current office phone can't do this, you deserve better. Hire your local experts. Hire Hamilton at hamiltonisbusiness.com. Whether you're looking for a place to stay for a concert at PBA, a Nebraska home game, or just a night on the town, the Courtyard Lincoln Downtown Haymarket is the place for you. Enjoy an evening at one of many restaurants or bars within a short walking distance. Business travelers at the hotel will enjoy free high-speed internet access, a 24-hour business center, and large in-room workstations. And check out the Bistro, where you'll enjoy healthier food and beverage options, as well as high-tech conveniences. Book your room today at the Courtyard Lincoln Downtown Haymarket. Hi, Sean Callahan here for Cobble Chevrolet GMC, and our annual spring sales event is now underway. We have absolutely huge savings right now at Cobble. New Sierras and new Silverados have a double whammy. Choose from APR starting at 1.9% or discounts over 9,000. Yes, that's right, 1.9% APR or discounts of over 9,000. So please take that short money-saving drive down 144th Street just south of the interstate or check us out online at CobbleCars.com. You'll be glad you did. All deals with approved credit now back to on the block with strick and austin on 93 7 the ticket and the ticket fm.com this is on the block with strick and austin brought to you by nebco big thanks to our friends at allo for sponsoring channel 961 if you're an allo, cha- allo cable subscriber you can click to channel 961 and watch all of our local content there allo also sponsors our vip line uh, at Allo, they understand the importance of exceptional service with local heart. We bring in Evan Bland of the Omaha World Herald, gracious enough to join us weekly here on Wednesdays at 2.30. Uh, Evan, did you survive the torrential downpour at Haymarket Park last night before the game? Huh. You know, it, somehow, it, it I wouldn't say it cleared off, but it dried up beforehand. So the cloud show was pretty spectacular, and it, somehow it stayed dry. I don't know how. So, yeah, I'm, I'm good. Well, speaking of dried up, Nebraska wins over Creighton. It has been a minute since the Huskers have handled Creighton. Uh, they fall again. And Evan, I think that the most worrying thing was well, we get to the weekend series with Rutgers as well, but we'll start with last night at Creighton. The bullpen, it's really been a bugaboo recently for the Huskers. You can point back even to the opening weekend with a couple blown leads. And then now again, the bullpen has been having some issues. Is there one thing you can put your finger on to why the bullpen has struggled so much? You know, it's no, not really, not one. Th- I mean, it's it was uh, a strength certainly for the first six weeks of the season, and it just hasn't held up. And and it really hasn't been one guy or two guys. I mean, you look at the Creighton game last night, and they the, the bull. It was essentially a bullpen game, and they had just given up two runs into the ninth inning, and uh, you know, obviously it got away at that point. Uh, so it's just been, you know, guys here or there, guys that have had strong starts. It's been hard for Nebraska to piece that thing together. I think, uh, you know, Will Bolt, his thought process last night was more annoyance at the offense for not uh, taking some of the burden off of those arms, right? I mean, it was a three to one game, then it was a three to two game, and really Nebraska didn't threaten much to extend that thing to five to one or six to one, and then you're talking about a much different situation so i think you know part of it has been certainly uh, the bullpen but i think the offense maybe hasn't totally pulled its fair share of the load at times and defensively it's been kind of hot and cold too so i think generally speaking it's just been an inability to put it all together consistently game in and game out and certainly in the last week or so uh, when you blow those ninth inning leads that's going to get the headlines but i think it's that's just been one part of uh, being unable to put it all together and they, they lose two out of three on the road at Rutgers. They've got, what, their first quad one win, I think, in taking the Saturday game. Let's talk about Mason McConaughey and his development. What have you seen from him in that Saturday role from where he started at the beginning of the year? Yeah, he's one of the feel-good stories on the team this season for sure. I mean, he came into the season as maybe a midweek starter, maybe a long relief option out of the bullpen. And as they've gone through the season, I mean, he earned uh, a start, I think it was against Omaha in the midweek and did really well and then slid into that Saturday role the last couple of weeks and has been 
really good. And I thought any lingering doubt about what Nebraska would do on Saturdays was extinguished by what McConaughey did on Saturday with the nine strikeouts, no walks. I mean, he, he kind of gives you everything that you're looking for in terms of missing the bats, length into the game. Uh, you know, when you go six or seven, that really spells your bullpen in a lot of good ways. So uh, to me, I mean, you look at kind of Nebraska's outlook, they have a, a pair of co-aces at this point when, in Brett Sears and McConaughey and both guys who uh, maybe weren't necessarily on Nebraska's radar in those sorts of roles a year ago. Uh, but here they are, and, and I thought McConaughey, uh, you know, his story is kind of interesting too. As a junior college player last year, who's at Nebraska as a sophomore, it took him some time in the fall. He has said to sort of gain confidence that his stuff could play at the Division One level, um, but it, it certainly has done that. And I think when you talk about Sears and McConaughey now at the top of the rotation, it gives Nebraska a chance to win any of its weekend series here the rest of the way in the Big Ten. And Nebraska is going to have to do that if they, they want to definitely secure, you know, a, a two seed in a regional, which is obviously down the line. But I'm glad you brought up the Juco thing. That was a, a big point of emphasis for the staff in recruiting. A lot of Juco guys in the, this past class. How have you seen this this most recent crop of Juco guys? Who are some of the standouts uh, from those ranks so far for the Huskers this season? Yeah, it's one of the kind of subtle stories of this team this year has been their first, their pivot from – hitting the transfer portal hard to hitting the junior college ranks hard. I think that's something that they found has been a better use of their efforts. You look at the coaching staff from Will Bolt to Rob Childress, Lance Harvell, and Mike Sirianni. All of those guys have junior college ties at some point in their careers, and they hit at a really high rate when you talk about bringing in prospects from that level in this cycle, I mean, uh, Ty Stone, who's played a good amount of first base, has been one. Riley Silva, who's been in center field from the start. Uh, McConaughey, like we mentioned. Evan Borst out of the bullpen. Um, you know, you can kind of just bounce around. Uh, Josh Overbeek has been a junior college player, and, and he's been their starter at third base. So, yeah, I mean, they've hit at a really high level. Dylan Huff has been sort of a reserve utility guy. Uh Aaron Manius, who was a player, an infielder who was hurt preseason, who they liked uh, to be a contributor this year, too. So I mean, you can say they probably went seven for eight, eight for nine in terms of their junior college hits this year. That's uh, obviously a, a credit to the coaching staff. They would tell you there's some luck involved as well. But, um, yeah, I mean, you look at Nebraska a year ago, they were out of the at-large postseason conversation by this point in the season. And so one reason that they're suddenly back in there certainly has been their ability to bring in talent from the junior college level to contribute right away. Contributing right away, but also now that these guys are, are old, but they're also not young. Nebraska is in definitely the roughest stretch of its season you know, so far with three losses in its last four games. Do you think we're seeing – you know, the true ceiling for Nebraska and that it can beat up on some bad teams, be competitive with good teams, or is this just a rough stretch that, that maybe some, some veteran experience from these Juco guys who've been around the block. Do you see Nebraska snapping out of this kind of funk sometime soon? Well, I think this weekend will be a really interesting series with Maryland coming to town. I mean, this week and next week, Nebraska's at home. You've got the eight game homestand. This, that's a stretch where I think you find out a lot of that stuff because sometimes you do get into the middle of the season, you go on the road, slumps happen. Um, you know, that, that, that loss at Kansas, uh, a week ago, like you see that in the midweek every week from ranked teams and unranked teams alike. So sometimes that sort of thing just happens. But I think now that you're at home and you've got, you got Maryland, you've got, um, you know, Iowa next weekend, uh, that's a stretch where I think you need to make some progress. You need to win some series. Maybe you need to uh, win a game or two convincingly to show that out. Uh, and I think Nebraska has the ability to do that. The, the midweek conversation to me, uh, I think is colored by the fact that it's Creighton on the mm -hmm. other side. And that can really irk a lot of Nebraska fans and Nebraska players and coaches for that matter. So like, I always felt like if you, if you took, the team that Creighton is with the RPI that it is, and you put the name Wichita State in there or Kansas State or someone like that, I think people would say, you know, hey, uh, that's a good team. These things happen, and you move on uh, to the fact that that in-state rivalry has not gone Nebraska's way, I think, sort of adds to the intensity or the heat maybe of the conversation. Because when you look up at it, Austin, I mean, Nebraska is still 
a top 20 RPI team at this point. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're, they're absolutely in contention to win the Big Ten. I would still call them the favorites to do so. And, yeah, they've had some slumps. They've shown that maybe uh, the conversation for them hosting a regional is starting to fade. But I think the conversation for them as a solid at-large team in the NCAA tournament is very much there. Uh, there's, there's, um, you know, I think r- realistic room to grow defensively, uh, how they tinker with the lineup and the pitching. So, yeah, I, I think the season's certainly not over at this point. But now that you're in this home stretch, I do think that's a point where you need to take care of business a little bit and remind everybody what your ceiling can be. Evan, East Drake here, man. Thanks again for always joining us. Hey. Evan Bland, Omaha World Herald. How are you, man? Hey, great, man. How are you? Good, good, good. Listen, quick question. Um, because we know that Nebraska jumping in the transfer portal was a necessity, was, was a necessity and not just something that they wanted to do to add. They needed to get into the portal because of the losses, uh, on their roster. Now, um, there's, there's some things in which I view Nebraska, two things. One, I'm starting to look at them and they're looking very Wisconsin-ish to me. Uh, you know, not super athletic, uh, just pretty much a bunch of guys that are going to be able to to play a solid style of basketball, some good contributors. And then, so to me, they're not like Mahogany's or Fleming Steak or, you know, going down and, and getting one of those Albernauts steaks, you know, that, that good quality beef. That, <laughs> that, that they, It's kind of like an Applebee's steak to me. It isn't that full Monty where you go in there and you're just going to get that suckle in it just kind of oh yes this is it but <laughs> what do you think of what they got and what do you think they still need because they, I don't believe they still have the sizzle yet yeah I would agree with that it's been uh, you know April madness I suppose for Nebraska it's, it's you know you, you kind of weather the attrition and now you're into the part where you're adding to the roster they needed a point guard right and they got one uh, in Worcester out of uh, Utah there, um, and, and then the the Rutgers forward Griffith. I think he gives you a little bit of you know a little bit of length, a little bit of scoring upside certainly as well. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm still curious kind of how things resolve with Rink Mast. I mean, that to me is kind of the next step. Is he coming back? Is he not? If he is, um, you know, then you have that big man who can stretch the floor uh, as a, as a three point shooter. If he's not. Yeah, you know, how do you replace that? Um, you know, you got Andrew Morgan, the center from North Dakota State, but he's not really necessarily a floor spacer. I don't I believe that's part of his game necessarily. So, you know, I still think if you're Nebraska, you'd love another uh, shooter from the wing. You'd love another, um, you know, a guy who can create his own shot. I know that's those guys come at a premium, right? It's hard to find players like that. Um, but Fred Hoiberg did it in his last cycle. He's tended to find luck in the portal. So I, you know, I, I just, I guess, go back to, if you can have a tra- proven track record, that's a great place to start. But um, somebody who's consistent from the outside, somebody who can, who can handle the ball a little bit uh, and then fit into sort of the ecosystem of what Fred Hoiberg wants to do offensively to me is a good place to start. If you're Nebraska trying to continue that momentum from last season. I want both of you to talk on this too, because I don't think Wisconsin is a bad model for Nebraska to be following necessarily. I mean, we know this is a program that, you know, has final force in its history that has been, you know, a one seed and a two seed but with some regularity, but also more often than not, it's been, you know, in the, that six to 10 range when it makes the NCAA tournament. I don't know about you guys, but I think a lot of Husker fans would be okay with Nebraska being, you know, consistently in the tournament, even if it's, a, you know, a six to 10 seed. And if they happen to, you know, get more athletic one year and it all comes together, pop up and, you know, be a, a, a three or a four. But at this point, shouldn't Husker fans, you know, be okay and be expecting, you know, Nebraska just to fall in that kind of Wisconsin range in basketball. Yeah, absolutely. I don't, I don't see any problem with that, especially for a program like Nebraska, where it's been 10 years since their previous NCAA trip and, you know, more than uh, 10 uh, prior to that. So yeah, if you, if you can get in, like anything can happen. And I think we've seen that more in modern college basketball the last three or four years than ever, where, uh, there's there's parity. There's NIL makes a difference. The transfer portal makes a difference. It's much harder to remain that blue blood at the top. Just ask Kentucky, who is their coach to Arkansas of all places. Like the the line, I think between the haves and the have nots continues to blur. And yeah, like when you start projecting what Nebraska can be next year, 
Uh, I don't know that the, the roster as it's coming together would be one that could be any more competitive with Texas A&M uh, than the one that just lost to them in the first round. But like, you can't worry about matchups in the NCAA tournament really beyond uh, how, how you can win the big 10 and you know, the big 10 um, has, has evolved, I think over the last few years, it used to be known more as a big man's league. And there's still a little bit of that, but um, you know, N- Nebraska, I think one with experience it won with, um, a vision for the players that had, I mean, Casey Tominaga and Josiah Alec and Rick Massey, these are all very kind of unique players in their own right. And Nebraska and their coaching staff found a way to utilize them collectively in a way that was really efficient. So uh, I, I think, yeah, Wisconsin would be, they tend to play greater than the sum of their parts. And I think if Nebraska got to that point and they were in the big dance, you know, two or three out of every five years, uh, Husker fans would be thrilled with that. We're talking with Evan Bland of the Omaha World Herald here on our Allo VIP line. A couple football things for you, Evan. Let's start in the wide receiver room. I uh, heard from Isaiah Nayor. I believe Jamal Banks was also at the podium. What do you take away from the two transfer wide receivers Nebraska got when they spoke to the media? Well, yeah, Nayor, uh, you know, it was kind of it was fun to see him up close. I mean, he looks the part uh, as a taller, thicker receiver. Um, you know, we saw him a little bit in practice. He's got the speed clearly. Uh, and I just thought he was pretty introspective in his talk this week. Um, you know, as a guy who started out at, at Wyoming and transfers to Texas and, and just kind of said, you know, the first time I transferred, I, I kind of did it for the wrong reasons and he didn't play a ton at Texas. And I, he just kind of struck me as a guy who had some quiet confidence about him. Um, and somebody who's in a wide receiver room that, I think, uh, you know, can, can be a leader. Um, he doesn't necessarily have a ton of that on-field experience, especially from the last couple of years. Um, but it, I think he does bring sort of a change of pace to the group where you have this mix of guys who are uh, smaller and, and, and have elite speed like Jalen Lloyd. Um, and, and you've got guys like Neor who also has some game breaking speed, but is more of a big, time threat so you know, I, I think he'll be interesting jamal banks uh he spoke i think at the open of spring ball and to me he uh is a really impressive just individual when i talked with him when he committed and uh when you, you hear about kind of how he's been as a leader off the field certainly uh a really impressive kid and, and i think someone who wants to make a difference in the world and i think he can make a difference in nebraska's offense too as someone who's got that track record of production at wake forest and um, you know, I think if you're looking at anybody who could continue Nebraska's run of success with receivers in the transfer portal, it'd probably start with Banks. So uh, really Im- impressive spring by all accounts so far. And I think he's maybe on the short list of guys that fans are excited to see in the spring game here in a week. Yeah, coming up very shortly um, on-, on that topic. Nebraska holding some veterans out of some of these scrimmages. Do you think that's just normal maintenance? Do you think it's to see, you know, younger guys, a combination of those two? Why aren't some of Nebraska's bigger names participating in scrimmages to this point? Yeah, Matt Rule kind of laid some of that out earlier this week. It was kind of a philosophy. He said he picked up from Joe Paterno when he was at Penn State as a player in the 90s and and just kind of said, look, you know, when you get to – thousand career reps or so like there's not a ton for you to prove in some of these scrimmages whether that's behind the scenes scrimmages or uh sort of a red white uh you know public scrimmage so i i think it makes a lot of sense i mean those guys kind of you know what you have in players like nash upmaker or ty robinson or isaac gifford or, or whomever um and so it allows them to physically sort of maintain and, and stay healthy but it also gives those younger players an opportunity to be evaluated further right so like i don't think there was there would be a ton of use in somebody like ty robinson playing heavy minutes in the spring next week just because you know what you have in him and, and he decided to come back for an extra year um you know to, to help lead the team and not necessarily to get a ton of spring reps so I think it makes sense, uh, and, and maybe it's sort of that early sign that um, in future years, too, when Nebraska's most veteran players maybe will be uh, certainly practicing and being involved with the team, but when it comes to sort of the live action moments, uh, maybe that's a spot Nebraska can um, you know, try to uh, – lean a little bit more toward health uh, when it comes to its older guys. And it's probably easier to hold some of these guys out in the spring game if it is a true red-white. Do you anticipate Nebraska breaking into uh, just two teams instead of having the three offenses and three defenses like they've had throughout spring practice? 
That's a good question. We haven't heard anything definitive about that. Uh, I would assume at this point that they would continue with the red-white format, but you know, just hearing from players and, and things that have been on social media too, like I don't think those players would have any issue with continuing the spring league theme that they've had and having, so I don't know how you do it um, with three fields. I mean, you'd have to find a way to um, rotate in those different three offenses and defenses to play against each other. But uh, I think the players would be excited about that. Um, Again, I don't know what the setup would look like. So I imagine it'll be sort of a red, white format, um, but I guess we'll find out. I think the staff tends to be creative. They tend to be, uh, to have a really heavy emphasis on competition and how you can bring that out of players. So I guess I also wouldn't be surprised if there's some sort of twist to the game this year that adds to it. 10 days away from the spring game. Last thing for you, Evan, is there anyone that you're, you're keeping an eye on that you want to see in full or closer to full game action, you know, more live speed, any player on offense or defense that you're looking forward to seeing? Oh yeah, sure. A bunch. I mean, I think a lot of the receivers I'm really interested to see. We, we mentioned Nayor and Banks. I think uh, Ja'Cory Barney as a true freshman is really interesting. Demetrius Bell, who redshirted last year, is really interesting to see if he uh, if he's fully healthy uh, in the spring game. I think he would be fascinating. Obviously, Dylan Raiola and Daniel Kalen. I mean, you want to see how those quarterbacks perform uh, as true freshmen and and whether that further informs if Nebraska goes to the portal to add to that room or not. Um, you know, and, and I would say the running back position too. I think that's been one that's probably received the least amount of praise offensively this spring. And in part, just because it's hard to evaluate that position when you're not tackling to the ground and you can't see who can, uh, you know, sort of wiggle through in tight spaces and make more out of less. And so uh, maybe there'll be, a development there, whether that's Dante Dowdell or Ramir Johnson or, or whomever, uh, Emmett Johnson. So we'll, we'll see kind of how that shakes out. And then, you know, I think defensively, I mean, quite honestly, it's mostly guys that we are pretty familiar with. So, you know, can a guy like Cam Lenhart take that next little step forward in the spring? Does he look a little bit bigger? What is the linebacker group look like um, now that it's two longtime starters are gone with MJ Sherman and, and chief borders, Mackay Bayer, what do they look like? So, yeah, I think uh, it'll be a fun scrimmage in that regard as usual. Uh, I'm sure we'll all be very measured and uh, not overreact <laughs> to anything that we see. Uh, but yeah, I think it'll give us a little bit more of a talking point and a little better expectation for what the fall is going to look like. That yearly Nebraska tradition being measured and balanced. <laughs> Right. Sure. Let's go with that. <laughs> Evan, as always, appreciate your time. Thanks for hopping on with us. Hey, thanks, guys. See you. Evan joined us on our VIP line brought to you by Aloe Fiber, where they understand the importance of exceptional service with local heart. One segment left to go in hour one. Thanks to everyone who's jumping on the streams with us. Royals are on the airwaves all day. Got a double header, got rained out last night. So they're playing one right now. Game two immediately after. We'll wrap up hour one of On the Block and then get to three on three to start hour two right after this. Community means something different to everyone. But for me, it means cheering on those around you during the good times and helping them out during the tough times. I'm softball player Jordy Ball, and I've been blessed with the support of my friends, family, coaches, and community throughout my life. When looking for a bank to call home, it was easy to choose Midwest Bank. I never feel like just another customer, and they're proud to support their communities. They love what they do, and it shows. Your community, your bank, Midwest Bank. Hey, Nebraska, register today for the 40th annual Cornhusker State Games, taking place July 11th through the 21st in Lincoln, Omaha, and other Nebraska communities. The Cornhusker State Games features 70 sports for athletes of all ages and abilities. Price increases are approaching, so register early and save. For details, go to CornhuskerStateGames.com. Rehydrate, replenish, refuel with Gatorade. Brought to you by Pepsi-Cola of Lincoln, a proud partner of the Cornhusker State Games. 
Spring sports are here and it's time to upgrade your equipment, but don't go rush into your big box store. Play it against sports is your place to go for all spring sports equipment for baseball, softball, golf, and disc golf. Play it against sports has quality, slightly to gently used equipment and 50% of their inventory is actually new equipment. And don't forget buying from them is a great way to get new products with great discounts by also bringing in your used items for store credit or cash on the spot. Play it against sports at 48th and vine. Power Combo BOGO? Huh? Yes. If you purchase an air conditioner, you receive a furnace completely free. At John Henry's, our professionals want to ensure you are comfortable in your home all year long, no matter what Nebraska has to throw at us. Call today to schedule your free estimate and learn more about the free furnace waiting for you. Give John Henry's a call today. 435-5555. John Henry's Plumbing. Heating and air. And electrical. Bagels and Joe is the perfect place for breakfast or lunch in April. Try their brand new cake batter cream cheese on any breakfast sandwich. And try the caramel latte as 10% of proceeds from that drink will go to the Foundation for Lincoln Public Schools. Four locations in Lincoln and one in Seward, Bagels and Joe. Are you looking to get into the electrical construction industry or wanting a new scene? The electrical workers of Local Union 265 are now hiring licensed journeymen and apprentices and are offering great pay and benefits. Call Mike at 402-875-1034 to apply. Start your electrical career today. Homeowners, is your yard in distress? Is your lawn being held hostage by stubborn and unruly weeds? Never fear, lawn lovers. Weed Man is here. We'll rescue your lawn and restore its beautiful emerald green glory. The results of our expertly applied program are sure to impress the toughest of critics, your neighbors. Take that, Dale. Vanquish weeds and transform your lawn this year with Weedman Lawn Care. Get 50% off your first application. Go to Weedman.com today. Terms and conditions apply. Go to Weedman.com today. It's officially one of the greatest weeks of the year on the sports calendar. Masters Week. Book your tee time today with friends, family, or coworkers at Double Eagle Golf inside the Kinetic Sports Complex on West O Street. Doors open at 10 a.m. from Thursday to Sunday, and they'll have food directly from Augusta National, like pimento cheese sandwiches, Georgia pecan caramel popcorn, and lots more. Plus specialty drinks to get you in the mood for the greatest golf tournament in the world. Book a bay today at DoubleEagle.golf. School tells you all about the Four Seasons. Spring, summer, and so on. And then there's a way we really tell what time of year it is. Sports seasons, football season, baseball season, or even off season. Well, what's the chocolate season? Well, it's now, of course. And now, and now, and always. Whether you're looking for a caffeinated pick-me-up on the way to work, a little snack on the way home, or you need the perfect gift that's sure to be appreciated. It's time for the chocolate season, y'all. 40th and Old Cheney, or order ahead at thechocolateseason.com. See you there. Okay, it's time to sell the house. How do we even begin to choose from the hundreds of realtors in town? Easy. We make a pros list. You mean a pros and cons list? No, just a pros list. We need someone with pro photography to showcase the house in the best possible way. Pro marketing to make sure we get maximum exposure. Pro negotiations so we know we get the best price. This is one of those times where you already know the right answer, isn't it? You know it is. Ben Bleicher and Professional Realty Group. Contact Ben Bleicher and the team at Professional Realty Group of Berkshire Hathaway's Home Services Ambassador online at prg-ne.com. It's the best time of the year to order a new John Deere sprayer during Landmark Implements Fast Start Early Order Program. Leverage the industry's latest technology with Sea and Spray to target weeds in season in corn and soybeans and use less herbicide per acre. Utilize Exact Apply to save in chemical usage and prevent over-application. Now is the time to lock in the best price of the year during Landmark Implements Fast Start Early Order Program. Contact your local Landmark location for full details and experience the Landmark difference. Attention all Wings fans. 89 Cent Wings are back on Tuesdays at Buffalo Wings and Rings in Lincoln. Enjoy the best wings in town for boneless or traditional at a price that makes the whole family happy. And now at the Williamsburg Village Wings and Rings, you can enjoy $1.50 tall boys in Bud Light, Coors Light, Bush Light, and Michelob Ultra every day after 7 p.m. and all day on Sundays. Get to Wings and Rings today and make sure to stop by on Tuesdays for 89 Cent Wings. Not many businesses can say they've made it 60 years, but Madsen's Bowling and Billiards can. With 12 bowling lanes in the biggest pool room in Nebraska, where else would you go to enjoy an afternoon or evening? 
There's a great daily specials like $2 Tuesdays, games of bowling, shoe rentals, draft beers, and tacos, all just $2 each. Have a delicious burger at EJ's Lounge before or after your bowling or pool session, and you'll leave satisfied. Madsen's Bowling and Billiards at 47th and Dutton. This is On the Block with Strick and Austin. Nebraska Basketball Hall of Famer and nine-year NBA vet, Eric Strickland. Strickland for three! And you're going to go out of here as the Big 8 tournament champion. Middle school basketball coaching legend and Duke basketball shooting coach in his mind, Austin Orman. Coming at you live from the heart of Lincoln, America, on air and online at theticketfm.com. Presented by Nipco. This is On the Block with Strick and Austin. Hour two of the show. Lots to get to. Lots, lots, lots in the realm of basketball. Strick specialty, House Crawl Famer, nine-year NBA vet. We got some college, but a lot of NBA headlines to get to here. And Strick, really, the news of the day, Ooh. Jonte... The news Porter. of the year. Seriously, though. Jonte Porter of the Toronto Raptors has received a lifetime ban from the NBA due to gambling. We saw Calvin Ridley in the NFL get a one-year suspension. Some other players uh, get a rest-of-the-year suspension. But Jonte Porter, who's been really a journeyman, who's had a heck yeah. of a time even making it to the league, gets popped. And this is by far, I mean, this side of Pete Rose, this is like oh, the yeah. most serious, you know, gambling punishment we've seen from, from a, you know, professional sports league handed down to one of its players. What are just kind of your, your initial thoughts, your reaction when you heard this news come down the pipe? Well, let's say this is, this is the crazy part about it for me is one. Okay. You, you have been a journeyman. No, you didn't measure up. This is the scary thing about this is, I think, deeper than just a betting situation, Austin. I mean, it's it's a scary thing when you look at this this whole this whole situation because this young man what is it, didn't measure up to what his brother's success was. Right? His brother's Michael Porter Jr. By the yeah, way, by the way. Um, so when you look at what he had to work to do, and and I've look, I've been on that rigmarole. I've I've been to the CBA and back and. You go through all these these you know, the different teams and all these things. The young man was making almost five hundred thousand mm-hmm. dollars, right? In the mind, sometimes of this 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 generation, that's not enough. Because guess why? You're looking at your brother. You're looking at some of these other cats, and at that point, it's it's very similar to when you see football players or other sports where all of a sudden they jump in the drug game. Like, it's the craziest dynamic that I've, I've seen. This is scary from a lot of ways because I watch games and I see cats now and I'm like, like go back and watch some CP3, you know, uh, playoff games. And I'll be like, man, is he point shaving? Scott Foster hates Chris Paul. You talk about him at the end. Like, Chris Paul doesn't win when Scott Foster hates it, it, it all. Yeah, right. No. And I'm not I'm 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 not even saying or blaming. I'm just saying you start to kind of question and this is just this just pours f- fuel on the fire of the questions of people's minds. Mm-hmm. Because he goes and tells people bet my unders. And then when you go look at the film, oh gosh. When you look at the film of like just some of the stuff and then you know you have eye issues, it's the technology of the day. Just think about you couldn't really do this, and we're not even going to say that this didn't happen in the past. Mm-hmm. So there some some questions were asked as to whether or not your boys, the Duke Blue Devils, and the U- UNLV situation, there was some paperwork on it. That's now, on UNLV. Exactly. They won by 30 the year, the year before. before. So some people are speculating, like, a lot of people had a lot of, you know, cashola. They was connected to a lot of, the, mm-hmm. you know, casino f- I'm not allegedly. I'm just throwing. I'm just saying that what the speculation of the matter was. Main point is Duke is queen. UNLV point. Change. Oh, boo. Okay. So, anyways, um, continue. So it's 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 this part that when you look at him, you tell other people. You try to bet little money. It, it 
every hand it touches with the technology of the day, it all can be traced. Mm -hmm. Back in the day, you couldn't do that because it was just papers. Yep. It was, you know, you write on the paper, you say what it is, you give it to your guy. He, he goes to a shady it. part of town. Right. You, you, you know, there was really not much to track on it. Mm -hmm. You had to basically get the book. Yeah. You had to catch him in, in motion, get the book, then do your tracking system by way of the book. But usually that's tracked by not name, but number. So then you had to do extra work. Now, DraftKings, hey, wait now, 20,000, 30,000. 50,000 on this cat? Let's take a look at the film. It smells fishy. Let's look at the film. Oh, the film. Look, yeah. He played so, three minutes and claimed he was sick. You might want to check. You might want to check on your boy. And that's how you end up getting 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 caught. So it's it's crazy. It's scary. But with this major ban, Austin, it, I think it puts people on notice. Mm. But even more scarier is the relationship him and his brother had. They say in the offseason, he lives with his brother. Right. So did him, allegedly, did him, um, uh, MPJ, did he, you know, slide a 100000 to a couple of homies? And the investigation may come down. I hope it doesn't, to be honest. I'm just going to say that. Right. Now that Michael Porter Jr. is a superstar, but that's an important role player for the defending champion, Denver Nuggets. If he is tied up in this at all, that's a huge blow. It absolutely is. I'd say a rotation piece for them. A guy that is 6'10 can really stretch the floor. And I, I want to believe, like you, that he's not involved, right? Maybe he knew about it. Maybe his brother hid it from him. I hope he didn't, you know, get involved in any way, whether it's he didn't place any bets or he didn't even fork over a little cash, you know, to cover or anything like that. Just stay out of it. Stay far away. You think this sent a message to the NBA, to the players? Enough of a message? Listen. Here's the here's the dynamic in the NBA that you have to watch for, and and it's something I don't think they teach, or I think it's something that they try to teach, but they really don't get through, because you really don't get through until you realize that Father Time is undefeated. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's this: a lot of us at a young age feel we have what I call the Samson syndrome. Samson syndrome is when you think you can get into any situation, and, and, and this is biblically, this is a biblical thing. Samson was the guy that obviously fell to Delilah when Delilah cut his hair off in the Bible. And, you know, he loses his strength and then he gets put by the Philistines to do, work the mill. They blind him. And then all of a sudden he prays and he's able to destroy every, that, that's, that's it. But what I'm saying is the story of it is the Samson syndrome of thinking you can put yourself into any situation and no matter what you do, how you do it, how sneaky you think you are, how slick you think you are, you think you can get out of any and every situation. You don't find out until Father Time starts to crack mm -hmm. catch up with you. You don't find out. You don't think you're as slick as, you know, uh, you, you think you're as slick as you are, but technology, listening devices, all types of stuff is out there. So you going to talk to somebody, somebody <laughs> going to talk. You know what I mean? Right. right now, the best thing that most people have is tea, mm. information, mm. people selling information, people all day getting, getting sold information and mm -hmm. losing. So that's the scary part about it, Austin. There's a lot more to dig into. And I saw this from uh, Matt Moore, who writes for, I forget, uh, Action Network. So again, kind of, kind of a betting site, uh, but he says, um, there's a level of, of violations, a hierarchy of violations, as he views. I, I want your thoughts on this. The top tier is influencing the outcome of your performance, and by extension, the team's performance negatively. That is the worst thing. Next tier is betting against your team. Tier under that is betting on your team at all. Tier underneath that is betting it all on the NBA. And the final tier is informing others of your injury status to provide insider betting advice. Ooh, there's a oh, lot. Those there. are bad. Right, and that's what Matt and, 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 and others have gotten busted by that, by the one, the bottom tier one, the one where they they say, "Hey, listen, such and such and such is injured." You know, this could affect like that defensive end, that pitcher, mm -hmm. that they they've given some of that information. Um, I haven't seen people get busted hard on that. I've seen people get busted, but this is where Aaron Euless kind of got caught up in, and other guys and stuff like that in some of these lower tier ones. Yeah, but boy. When you start betting on your against your team, and then you af affect the outcome of it by 
uh, oh yeah, hey, you guys are familiar with Bull. You're you're, f- you're familiar with uh, you know when they go into the uh, the Matadors, they go into the ring and mm-hmm. and they yeah ole yeah you you're you're the ole guy out there <laughs> and everybody and and anybody can get past you out on the defense. And um, that's how Dennis Rodman was when I was with the Mad Room. You know? <laughs> Maybe he has some money. Maybe Dennis Rodman has some money. Allegedly. Maybe if Dennis Allegedly. was jumped to the plane on time. Right. That part. <laughs> so, yeah, them tears are crazy. And I think that's uh, – I think I like it. I mean, I, I get it. I understand. But what was the worst one again? Uh, the worst tier is influencing the outcome of your performance and, by extension, the team's performance negatively. That's him. Yeah. But did, was he that much of an impact? But he was a less impact. Right. Oh, gosh. Yeah, that's scary, bro. And here's wow. here's the other thing that Matt Moore would, would go on to say. He says, literally, the, the bottom tier. So informing others of your injury status to provide insider betting advice. Mm-hmm. Matt Moore says, that's enough for a lifetime ban. Um, but he also goes on to say, this is going to be one of the problems that exists with sports betting, whether it's legal or not, and whether the league partners with books or not. There is no way to prevent players from telling friends about their injury status and for those non-NBA associated people from betting on that information. You know what I'm mad about? Um, Let me tell you. Probably, yeah, please. They're coming down hard on, on this stuff in the athletic forum. But some of the biggest snakes is in Congress. So- and, 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 and listen... Because you know there are insider trading going on, but none of them are getting busted. Why they ain't getting in trouble is what I want to know. We talk sports. Lifetime talk, ban from Congress. Lifetime ban from Congress. Matter of fact, I still think the they United need. States. I still think they need term limits. To be honest, I think it's crazy. Some of the, you know, people can't even walk, and, and they're still serving. But nonetheless, listen, I, I, I really mean that though, mm-hmm. because they come down on so many different areas, but. Just in Congress for alone, right? Some of these people are making decisions based on inside information that they know. Like you can't tell me. And, and look, I'm not. I'm apolitical. I'm apolitical. I'm not. I'm not either. Or I'm an independent. So I'm not. You know, don't 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 come at me in the in the text line saying I'm one way or the other. I'm not. But I'm gonna I'm gonna throw this out here. There's no way you can tell me that Nancy Pelosi is the smartest woman on earth. Just I'm just saying. A woman that makes they make a hundred some thousand dollars a year, but yet you're worth 120 million. But you in the in the in the stock game is the smartest person on earth in your investments. I just don't believe it. I it, it makes me say, hmm. hmm. I feel like I'm on uh, Austin Powers and I'm freaking yeah that guy. But I'm just saying, it's crazy how you know stuff comes down on mm-hmm. some guys and it and don't come other. down on the other. I'm just throwing it out there. You know, I, I'm I'm not saying nothing, but I'm saying something. Um, John T. Porter, I'm sorry for you, my boy, because other people should be in trouble too. That's all I'm saying. That part. Okay. From the NBA perspective, obviously not a good look. Yeah. But we've talked about this a little bit, you know, on the show in the past. TV deal. How does the NBA suspending John T. Porter for life impact their next TV oh, deal? Gosh. Does it does it hurt them with sports books? Like, hey, this guy was betting; he was feeding us money. You know, we don't want to partner with you. Is it a good look for e- or for you know the NBA with television partners to say, "Hey, look, we were willing to take this action, and we want you to to help us be responsible when it comes to sports gaming." How, how does this situation affect the upcoming TV negotiations? Great question. There, there's so much looming because we just talked about it on the crossover. Mm-hmm. Because you just have all of these discrepancies, like the the keyboard warrior. Shout out to all of y'all. Boom, y'all. Look, Sauter Heyman text line. Love Boom. Y'all. We love y'all because if we miss something, hey, y'all going to definitely uh, give us the right information. Mm-hmm. Shout out to the keyboard. So listen, one of the things about this is the keyboard warriors are going to find information. If you want to know something, if you're concerned about something, if you've even thought about something, you can do some searches and somebody's then done some research, somebody then dug into it, somebody's looked into it, and then they'll give you multiple perspectives. Mm-hmm. Somebody will give you one ang- angle, another person can give you, and then you can kind of weigh it out. Some of it's all bad, you know, and then you got to go do it on yourself to make sure you're getting right information, right? So what I mean by that is 
it can be a hindrance because you've got so many things looming in the NBA right now. You've got the just the huge just, and people have brought this out. This research huge discrepancy. Like the the if you just can go down and track it game by game, the Lakers would not be in the playoffs if they did not get help. I mean, talking about major help. They wouldn't be there. They well, would even again last night. Even last LeBron night. LeBron and AD shot 20 free throws. The Pelicans as a team shot 15. There you go. It's crazy. And and, mm-hmm. and you can look at it mm-hmm. and you see they attack. Uh, Zion Williams attacked just as much as any of them, but wasn't didn't get the same type of deal. So now I'm just saying mm-hmm. that's that's looming. You got the now the the uh this this whole thing with Jonte mm-hmm. Porter, you've got Previous stuff that had come up that now magna remagnifies it with uh, Donahue, um, and your ratings numbers are low. Now you have a problem because you don't have uh, the players that you used to be able to promote, because most of them are mid tier guys. You're not right. promoting. The, you're not promoting the top end guys, and mm-hmm. then guess what? Top end guys are mostly what foreigners. Right. So you, you've got a quagmire of trouble going on and brewing right now. And my thing is, what does Adam Silver have to say? I'd love to hear from you. 402 464 If you were Adam Silver, this is the question to y'all. If you was Adam Silver on stream two, you can jump on the stream. And you are in the, in the process of a TV negotiation, a re-up. You're wanting more. What are you, your three things you're trying to sell right now? I'd love to know. I would also love to know. Are you trying to sell players? Are you trying to sell the product generally? Are you trying to sell expansion? Right. What, what are you trying to sell? But here's You're going to have to do that to the networks. Yeah. Uh, if you're CBS, if you're ESPN, if you're TNT, if you're Fox, I've got to sit down in front of you, Austin, and have a, a candid conversation about, What's the value of what I have to offer? And the problem for the you've NBA... You've got debt you've got to cover, too. Guess, oh, what, well, guess what that is? Mm-hmm. A lot of debt. you got a, a lot, lot of different, debt. Different places. And you, you mm-hmm. still got to kind of prop up and hold up the WNBA. So mm-hmm. you, you, you need some pot paperwork. The easiest way to get that paperwork? Get in bed with betting companies. Mm. Multi-billion dollar industry. And this is where the NBA has to be really careful, Strick, because there's right? no way Jonte Porter was the only NBA player passing information or betting on it. games. He, he can't be the only one. I don't one. believe it. The because guess group, what? He's having conversations. Mm-hmm. He, he, now, they said some of the big ones didn't pay, but I bet there was, you, you know, no, no criminal goes in on the first try and goes for the gusto. One of Porter's friends put 80 grand. That's late. Yes. Because what do you do first? Sprinkle. You sprinkle. You test the marketplace. You peek into the door. You kind of case the place. You do a lot of that stuff first. You don't just go in, walk in, and just, you know, bust into the vault. No. You don't do that. Mm-hmm. You kind of test the market. You know, mm-hmm. A little bit here. Could I get away with it there? How much could I get away with? You know what I'm saying? Then you hit for the big one because you know it, it it's tried and, and, and tested. Mm-hmm. Right? So guess what? Yo, dog, I just hit for, you know, 60 grand in a day. You know what I mean? You know, I played my unders, put about four grand on it, three grand, boom, I hit. You know what I'm saying? My rebounds, my points, my mm-hmm. this, my assists, I hit. You, you know, might want to give it a shot. Because guess what? There's more people like him at that minimum two-way contracts. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And they're figuring out, how can I catch up with my brother? How can I catch up with LeBron? How can I catch up? Matter of fact, I don't even want to be LeBron. I just want to be in a 20-minute million club. Right. How can I get there? This is this is just an avenue. That's all. I I want your your take on this too, Strick, is that Jontae Porter was on a two-way contract really had to grind his way, you know, to even get that two-way contract. He's not the player his brother is, like you're saying. But for a guy that had to put in that much hard work and dedication to throw it all away, I mean, I get it. Like the money he was making is a much higher percentage of his $500,000 two way contract than it is a percentage of even his brother's contract. But if you have to have the mindset, the dedication, 
the preparation to get to that level. Why? What goes through your mind to throw it all away? Like, he played three minutes in a game and then claims he got sick, you know, to, to throw this and to, to make the unders hit. The dedication to get to the league and then the copping out with faking an illness, how does that square in an athlete's mind? I don't even know how you get to that point. I just, I, I couldn't do it. I'm, look, I think when I was coming in, it was, it was right before a lot of the referees now and then, and a lot of people think the referees are bad. And I was glad, like, I look back now. And when I was in G League training, I look back now and I'm like, thank goodness I didn't get up there. Mm-hmm. Because you just, you just see that some of them have to make decisions that has to play along with the, the games of the day. Whatever that game is. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Whatever the, whatever the, the script of the day is. Sometimes they had, oh, we need to make sure. And you can see it sometimes. It's, it's, it's sometimes just blatantly obvious. Mm-hmm. Um, you don't even really have to know what you're looking for. No, nah, sometimes. sometimes you just be like, come on, man. Come on. Like that one, like there was a foul last night. I think Alvarado, he got, no, it wasn't it. There, there was something. LeBron goes into the paint. It was late, too. And, one of the defenders' verticalities go straight up by rule. I, like, I, I mm-hmm. saw it straight up. And he falls back and falls and goes to the free throw line. That's a play on. That's mm-hmm. not – he jumps straight up. LeBron goes into him. He falls back. No hands are touched because that's what you watch. You watch body. You watch legality. Then you watch if there's any hand, any re-reaches, all of that stuff. Any, like, below the wrist. Any below the wrist, ball, right? right. Yeah. Yeah, you mm-hmm. so you go bot, you go legality, yes. Verticality, yes. Did he twist, turn, go A Forward. to B? Mm-hmm. A, A to A is good. A to B is no good. Did he when he went vertical? Did he re-reach and then try to go up? You got you. Those are all the things you watch for. None of that happened. Just straight up, all back misses the shot, but you go to the free throw line. Crucial because mm-hmm. it was it Ended was like back and forth. Game. It was back and forth. So. Those are the things that sometimes you just be like, oh, come on. Come on, man. So I feel bad. I don't know how the league's going to recover from this, Austin, to be honest. I don't know. I want to know the stories. I want to know how can you guys, how, what would you do if you're Adam Silver? I really do. I want to, I want to know because I'm, I'm, I'm looking for ideas and thoughts. I mean, you still got to deal with the All Star game. Mm-hmm. Your playing tournament is still. Eh. Yeah, uh, in season still, tournament was yeah, weird. That's what I'm choppy. saying. You still mm-hmm. gotta cut you, but you've got to try to sell that. You, you know how I try to sell it? Talk to me. I try to sell it through the Olympic team because you have the old guard on the way out, but you have, I think, a lot of the guys that the NBA wants to be the new face. See, I think they're older. The the a, a lot of them are, and I agree. But I'm saying Anthony Edwards is on that team. Okay, you Hallib- got to try to sell him. You got to try to sell him. Um. I think they're going to try to sell Halliburton. That's a small market. I mean, I, I love the guy. Great Most personality. Most of the guys are in small markets. Right. Um, Wemby's not playing for your team. and Embiid's international. Um, Tatum hasn't taken that next step. But I think I think what Adam Silver wants. Tatum and Booker are both there. Yes. So Edwards, Tatum, and Booker. I think those are the three guys Adam Silver wants to lead Team USA to gold. Yeah, because I think if Zion Williamson were on that team, I mean, he's I playing he some of been. the better basketball of his career before the hamstring strain yeah. last night. That's a guy that I think still has a chance to be the face of the league, especially Jalen Brunson's got to be one too. Brunson could be, but isn't on the team. No. So again, if you're looking at how does Adam Silver market, you want those three guys, Edwards, Tatum, and Booker, to put on a show and say these are the guys we are going to plant our flag on, not even for the next ten years, just say the next five years until that next crop is ready. Because I think these guys are mostly past their shot at being the face of the league. You have to dominate from day one. Yeah. You know, be a storyline from day one and play well all the way through. But I think Adam Silver is selling it as just buying time at this point until they can find that's the what next he needs. one. Because, because that's why I think you've got, you've got to give a balance of what it used to be and what it has become. Mm. What I mean by that, what it used to be, it used to be rivalries. Yeah. 
In the East, it was Bulls. It was Knicks. It was Pistons, Pistons. Pacers. And it's not one team. Right. It was, it was, it was a nice collective of about five or six teams Mm -hmm. that it didn't matter. Boston. Whoever, whoever Mm -hmm. was matched up. Even Philly popped in there at one time, right? right? In the 80s, yeah. Whoever was pop, whoever was was matched up with it, it was about the team. Mm-hmm. It wasn't just Dr. J, because it was Moses Malone. It was Mo Cheeks. You mm. knew all the guys mm. that was that was a part of it. It wasn't just Isaiah Thomas. See, that's what they've been that that's the new way. Mm-hmm. It was Dennis Rodman. It was Mark Aguirre, Adrian mm-hmm. Dantley, it was Joe Dumars. Then you had Vinny. And who had a name for himself, the microwave, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. Boston, it was, you knew who Larry Bird was, but he it wasn't. You knew Parrish. You knew McHale. Parrish, the chief. Mm-hmm. You knew McHale. You even knew Danny Ainge, who came sure. off the bench. Yeah. You, you see what I'm mm-hmm. saying? So, I mean, obviously the Bulls was just Michael Jordan at the time <laughs> <laughs> before they became the Bulls. But you feel what I'm saying? But even if you go west. Yeah. It wasn't Denver. It was Fat Lever. It was Kiki Vandeweghe. Alex English. Alex English. In Spurs, it was I, that's the, that's Finger Roll. Gervin. Iceman. Yeah. But even you can take that just one generation back. It was Shaq and Kobe, mm-hmm. but it was Lakers Spurs because you had the big three in San Antonio. You had. But then you Steve, had you big game. Amari. Ori. You're right. Lamar Odom. Odom. Powell. Yeah. I mean, I mean mm-hmm. right? Yeah. So, yes, Mm -hmm. you knew it was that, but still, it was rivals, though. Yeah. It was a form of it, and this is why Mm -hmm. it was thriving. Because guess what you had right up the road? That rivalry. Mm -hmm. Sack. Golden State. Golden. No, 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 no. Oh, Sack Los Angeles. Yeah. Yeah, Lakers, yeah. In 02, 01, 02. Right? (laughs) Bibby, Weber, Stojakovic. Mm. Vlade. uh, Vlade. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It it was a hot spot. And then off the bench, Bobby Jackson. Bobby Jackson. Right? Mm. Lakers still had a nice squad back then. Then same thing with Phoenix. Phoenix was, it wasn't just Barkley. It wasn't just, no, no it was a, it was Barkley, Marley, mm. Chambers, mm-hmm. Kevin Johnson. You knew all of those guys. Yeah, you knew like who a star <laughs> was. Mm-hmm. You knew who a star was, but you did. It was a hodgepodge. They need to get back to that. Mm-hmm. Where, yes, you may have a star, but you have a collective and you have a rival. And those rivalries, those matchups. Because when you heard that music, and you wanted to see those two teams that pop up, that was it, the rivalry. They need to get back to that because they've lost their way on that. It came, it became just players. This is a perfect transition because I think one way the NBA is trying to do that is by making it hard to keep cores together. You know, uh, if one superstar is going to make, uh, you know, 50 mil a year, it's going to be hard to carry two of those guys on a roster, especially if you're not getting the same TV money. Yeah, so yeah. I wonder if the NBA is trying to do that by with the super maxing and taking to the next level. If the NBA is trying to make it hard to keep these cores together to disperse that superstar talent. So you have more one on ones rather than in the big threes and big twos. And so that's the, the crazy thing about that. Shout out to Andy Harris. Thank you for on the stream. Uh, the question was, how did Michael Porter Jr. not be all questioned? Or is he questioned? I hope he's not. Nuggets need him. Absolutely. We 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 collectively agree mm-hmm. that we hope that <laughs> Michael Porter Jr. is not in that. But here's the thing, uh, Austin. I, I have to agree with you. That's a patient strategy, though. Mm-hmm. That takes time to implement. Mm-hmm. They don't have time. True. That's the That's the worrying part about it. Because it's right there in front of him. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Um, one of the things that they didn't do in the collective bargaining agreement is really, they didn't really get honest and candid and reflective about where where the things are. It kind of just did a kick down. The, what what most people do is kick kick it down the road. And right. they, they did a lot of that and didn't address a lot of issues that they probably need to address. Well, because think about it. The so, NBA was kind of on top of the world. The NBA was, you know, in a bit of a popularity surge yeah. to some degree. Now, the NFL <laughs> is obviously king, but the NBA probably felt pretty good about its position. I think it miscalculated to some degree, Stricky. Yeah, I think you're I think you're right. Um, you know, the the NFL is kind of starting to flow in that manner because it's very quarterback dominated, mm. right? 
But guess what you're starting to get in the NFL? A lot of mediocrity. Sure. You're getting a lot of... Now, unless you start to, you know, they're trying to push the Tua's. They're trying to push the Josh Allen's. They were trying to push the Justin Herbert's. They were trying to kind of push... And then Mahomes is clearly trying to trying to trying their best to get Dak Prescott in the mix, <laughs> you know. But Mahomes mm-hmm. stands out. Aaron Rodgers is getting older. Brady just left. So once the greatness, the top tiers of them left, you found in a lot of Mariotas, mm-hmm. a lot of Tannehills. You're finding a lot of Tua Tug- Tugavailoas. Mm-hmm. You, you, good, good quarterback. Fine. Now. Hope you're hoping that CJ Stroud I'm not. emerges. I'm just saying. Anthony I mean, Richardson. I'm saying if you're the NF, <laughs> if you're <laughs> if you're if you're, you're hoping an Anthony Richardson mm-hmm. emerges, you're hoping these Caleb Williams. You're hoping he becomes mm-hmm. because you in that you might want to do a shift and start shifting back into rivals. You start. You still kind of have them. Denver just not measuring up. Right. Um, it, Kansas it's City that you really play them twice a year. Right. Right. You, you, you're you hoping to create some of those, but some of them are just not, they're not matching up. The traditionals right. are not match. The Chicago's in Green Bay's is not match. The yeah. originals are not matching up the way that they used to be. Because right. now you got De- uh, Detroit now starting to kind of come. Mm-hmm. They don't really have a traditional match. They just play every, every Thanksgiving. Every, right. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. Let's take a break there. And I think that's a good transition point to the Golden State Warriors. Is the dynasty over? They fall to Sacramento last Ooh. night. They are out of the playoffs. Is the dynasty over? And who is most responsible for the dynasty lasting as long as it did? We'll talk through Golden State's demise next. Will your path take you, traveler, to seek fortune in a new career or on a journey to distant lands for a well-deserved vacation? Wherever you go. One distraction could spell disaster. You can change your fate, adventurer. Don't drive distracted. Paid for by the NDOT Highway Safety Office. If you're a homeowner or a business owner, you have a lot of projects, and no one has an unlimited budget or time. Sunbelt Rentals makes all jobs less stressful with no need to purchase large equipment or hire a crew. You can do it yourself with rentals and everything from aerators and power rakes for spring yard work to stump grinders, concrete mixers, tile saws, and more. Check out their inventory in Lincoln, north of Cornhusker Highway on 56th Street or online at sunbeltrentals.com. Hey, Husker Nation, Matt Davison here with 1890. It's an exciting time to be a Husker fan, and to keep that momentum going, we need your help. Nebraska's always been a leader in college athletics, and we're doing the same through name, image, and likeness. NIL is a unique opportunity for every Husker fan to have a direct impact on the success of our programs. Through 1890, 100% of your contribution goes to the student-athletes. So go to 1890nebraska.com, choose your sport, become a member, and help the Huskers recruit and retain the best. Go Big Red. Go Hog Wild Pit Barbecue. If the week's been too hectic to even think about dinner or your family can't handle one more night of leftovers, then it's time to let Hogwild do the cooking. Hogwild's family packs are one heck of a good deal for a complete barbecue meal loaded with all the smoked meats, tasty sides, buns, and sauces you need to feed your family. Order online at GoHogWild.com. Hogwild Pit Barbecue, 3210 Cornhusker Highway in Lincoln. But don't be late, we close at 8. The need in our community if you just look at the numbers, it's frightening. We're serving over a thousand kids every day. With the passion of our people, I really feel like our potential to be of even greater service to kids and families who are struggling is just unlimited. But in order to have the greatest impact, we need all the help we can get from the community. NEPCO is hiring CDL drivers for ready-mixed concrete, Husker concrete, and Beatrice concrete. NEPCO offers great pay, medical and retirement benefits, paid time off, and they pay for CDL training. Apply today and start your new career with a $2,500 hiring bonus. From NEPCO's beginning in 1908, it's the employees that have formed the company's solid foundation. Start your career today. Visit NEBCOinc.com. That's N-E-B-C-O-I-N-C.com. 
Sandhills Global is hiring. With their fast-paced, growing culture, they have hundreds of new openings in sales, marketing, traveling support, software development, web design, and more. Full-time roles offer a four-and-a-half-day work week, along with flexible internships in most areas. Career and internship opportunities are available at our global headquarters in Lincoln, Nebraska. Find your fit today at www.sandhills.jobs. This is Coach Bill Bush. You all know my passion for Nebraska. Having coached all over the country, I can honestly say there is no place like Nebraska. You know where there's also no place like? Midwest Bank. Midwest Bank has proudly served Nebraska for over 70 years, and they're located in nine different communities. Midwest Bank is ready, willing, and able to meet all your personal, business, and agriculture needs. Your community, your bank, and mine, Midwest Bank. Find out more at Midwest Bank. Member F-D-I-C. Now back to On the Block with Strick and Austin on 93.7 The Ticket and theticketfm.com. That's right. This is On the Block. Thanks for firing us up on the stream. The Royals lead over the air, 3-2 to two over the White Sox. Salvador Perez hits a two-run home run to put the Royals up 3-2. Last check in the eighth. We're talking some more NBA here um, Austin Norman, Eric Strickland with you. Stricky, the Kings did the thing. They did got the in the thing. way of what the league wanted. Um, not a great first half from the Kings, but they they really slammed the door in the second half, which leads us to this question. Is that it for the Warriors? Is that it? Is that the end of the run? I think it's a wrap. Um, I, I think the writing was on the wall. They was trying to, um, you know, um, let, me give, let, me, let me give an analogy. You know how, like, when you have a leak that you try to just kind of plug the leak, mm -hmm. but it needs to be fixed. It needs to be, you know, re-cemented or, you know, whatever it is. You need to go in there, clean it out, sand it out, and really just kind of do this whole section over again. Mm -hmm. and otherwise, it's still leaking. Yeah. Um, That's what's been going on with them for the last, what, Three years. They were able to squeak out one and and they backdoored their way into they that title. So their bad. Way into it. it wasn't it wasn't as if you knew that they were the dominant Golden State Warriors of the past. They just it just was able to work out. Right. Mm -hmm. But it really the the light was really on them. The spotlight was really on them as far as them falling a little bit early, like the last two years, where you literally could see like there's no way you can keep Clay. Mm. I was surprised that you re-signed Draymond. You made a big mistake in giving big bags to both Wiggins and Poole. Mm. So you hurt yourself on what you could do because in order to eliminate that, you had to, the mistake, you had to do something more than what you would have had to do in order because the value just well you, you basically had to give up whatever value you may have had you had to give up a lot of value and you're still paying the double luxury tax right. you are way up there just to get the 10 seed right. and go out meekly right that cannot be worth it i mean I, steph deserves to retire in golden state if that's what he wants i think he's been the most important player on this warriors dynasty draymond i think is probably second there just because of what he does defensively making them be able to play small but he's been a headache and clay i hate to say it but it's absolutely washed but even with that i don't necessarily think it's those three guys fault this is coming to an end do you agree yeah i i i personally think that their younger talent they're probably on the verge of losing because i don't think they had a focus on the development mm -hmm. of their young talent. Um, Who does that fall on? Front office, I, coach, I, I, I think staff? it falls on staff. I think it falls on Kerr, ultimately. Mm -hmm. I think he should have really done a good job on making sure Kaminga, who is super athletic, can do a lot of things, but he didn't come back with... He came back with better IQ, but he didn't come back with this. Mm -hmm. He needed. He needs this. Yeah. And that needed to be worked on. Like, 
I think they they have such a reliance on culture, such a reliance on, you know, the expectation of what you should be doing on it, and you should. But this younger generation sometimes a little bit different. You might need to monitor them a little bit. You might need to. Uh, Robert Pack was a you know good friend of mine, and we played together. But he used to work. I think he was at this time he was with the uh, Washington Wizards. But he would tell me I have to go and get with this young player, and I got to go spend about a week with him. Because they would go, they wanted to develop certain guys and they would go spend a little bit of time with them. Not, they didn't go and take up all this time, but they would definitely throughout the summer mm-hmm. on multiple occasions make sure he's doing certain things, maybe to enhance a weakness or to develop a skill set that they need for him to be better fit for the team. And so just all these different things. Uh, I don't think Golden State did that. I think they missed on Wiseman. I think they had a tremendous opportunity on a young talent to develop him and now he's kind of or even it's, it's turning why out like did they take him why not like a lamella ball it's starting to make a mistake now like it's right so not only did they right. not develop him they might have made the wrong pick to begin with because because you could just think about if that the, the difference of what that could have been you could have had a lamella ball yes he had injuries and stuff like that but you had ways to to get around that because of what you had with steph well you could play lamella at the one move that's steph what i'm saying ball and let clay guard some three that's what i'm saying that, that, that's where i was going but i'm saying because of his injuries, you had Steph right. still mm-hmm. to where you could still facilitate and do some of that stuff at the point guard position, plus other other guys that you may have had uh, at the time. And then you still had Wiggins, you know, mm-hmm. who's been brutal this year, brutal. And and I think he's dealing with mental something mental. Um, I think his dad after passed the away. father, yeah. and then the girlfriend situation, yeah. and stuff with that, you know. But yeah, that's where I think they missed the mark, and I think that's staff. I think that's Kerr. Um, um, maybe a better selling job if they could have kept Durant. What a dynasty it could have been if Durant would have stayed. I think I, I I don't I don't attribute that to anybody but Durant. I think Durant just wanted he's, he's an ego meg ego megalin. Yeah, I think <laughs> I think that did have something to do with it because guess why? Drake Draymond's a LeBron fanboy. True, and obviously Jay and Dre would get along. Jay and Dre would get along, and, and Durant has a lot of back and forth going back to the OKC days, mm-hmm. not able to, you know, break through mm-hmm. uh, with them, taking L's, had to go to Golden State to get it done. But he wasn't wise because if, if you stay there, and that goes back to that team concept mm-hmm. again, you wanted to be the man. You're similar to James Harden. You wanted to be the man. Now you realize that oh gosh that that that's that system doesn't work. Westbrook, all of them guys, they all that that was their whole issue is each one of them wanted to be the man. I think Russell Westbrook and James Harden proved they could though. I mean, think about the numbers Russ put up with OKC. Oh, yeah. Now it wasn't a championship caliber team, but you know, there's that. Russ also was pretty good in Houston. Harden MVP in Houston yeah. again, flamed out a couple times. But the guy that was never able to carry a team like that was Kevin Durant. Great point. Who wanted to be the alpha, but is such a beta personality. Yeah. Right. Again, I, I love KD's game. He scored the most points in Team USA Olympic history. Like in terms of the basketball, hard to, hard to top KD. Like he's a top fifteen guy of all time for me. But his mindset oh. doesn't fit with carrying a team and striking out on his own, which is where own. KD had to put himself aside for the betterment of his career and legacy to stay in Golden State understanding who Draymond actually was, right? Not getting so butthurt about it. But then Draymond's at fault for that too. If Draymond would have toned it down 10% just with Kevin Durant, maybe KD's still there and this is still going. Great point. Um, Because if you go back and you look at those eight OKC teams, one, they didn't give enough credence to... Uh, James Harden, mm-hmm. one. Or Ibaka, for that matter. Two, Westbrook was over Alpha because he shot them out of games. Instead of, if 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 the Westbrook of the latter version where he was the freaking triple-double super king, mm-hmm. if his mindset was more on the distribution part of it and average 20 points and not trying to average 30 points, that team would have been better because now Kevin Durant, when they needed him to be alpha, where he needed to go to Westbrook and say, yo, mother, get me the ball. 
You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, right here is where I want the ball the next three times. Like, he needed to be that. Mm -hmm. Because guess who? Guess who's like that? Kobe. Michael Jordan. You know what I'm saying? Bron. Even. (laughs) Bron's passing the ball. My (laughs) point. D Wade. Let me say that. Kawhi. D. Paul George and Kawhi, they both don't know who wants to do it. <laughs> right. But he at least did it by himself. So I can give him credit. J.R. Smith. J.R. Smith was shooting. Kyrie. He's also going to turn. Kyrie's give him the rock. He'll mm-hmm. go get it. Mm-hmm. I, I, I like guys like that. Yeah. Luca, Luca will go yeah, get it. He will. You know, there's guys out Wemby. there. Wemby. I like Wemby. Like, Wemby's going to be a problem yeah. for the rest of the NBA for many years Decades. to come. Whew. Okay, I'm done. That's the transition point because I saw this tweet from uh, a guy who writes for the Spurs who says, not for nothing, but the Spurs run felt borderline over when they lost to Memphis in 2011 uh, when Duncan was basically Steph Curry's age. Yeah. Then they recalibrated, went to three straight Western Conference finals, uh, back-to-back NBA finals, and won another one of those titles. So for the Warriors, he says, it's a big job for them to, to do, but it's doable. Is Steph and Draymond good enough to keep Golden State in contention? Or do they need to make another trade or do they need to blow it up? They missed their opportunity. There's too much money out there. They need to blow it up, revamp, focus on their young talent. Let the young talent make mistakes. Let them make runs. But the issue is going to be the young talent is going to start wanting money. Mm. So unfortunately when you have success austin you just kind of think you can walk into the room samson syndrome you think you can just you yeah, you think you can just walk in the room you think it just show up and it's going to be what it's going to be mm-hmm. but the ones who did it right and i'm going to say this probably for the next five years is okc yeah they 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 drafted right but guess what they they have to Shoot, even Memphis to some degree. Before everything went off they, the rails with Moran. They have to. Yeah. They those those organizations have to do it right. Many? Min, 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 uh Milwaukee yeah. was on yep. the on the verge. But then I think they overplayed themselves to keep it just the timing was bad for them because they should have made a move with Middleton. Mm. They they overplayed their hand keeping Middleton. They were able to keep Brooke at a good price. They were able to try. They were trying to keep the core guys, and then they ended up having to pay a, a, a super beta in um, um, point guard. He's now oh, uh, Drew. Drew Holiday. Yeah. yeah. He he wasn't he wasn't him. Yeah. Now you overpaid because you're trying to make sure you keep Giannis happy by going to get an elderly uh, Damian Lillard. Mm-hmm. Maybe one more year to give it a shot, but OKC did it right. They've stockpiled. They've uh, did great scouting. They found those those great up up and coming. So I think for me, OKC has looked not just at outside talent. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. They've looked at what they what what's what they're made of, right? Like they, I think they did different assessments of just the, the traditional measurements of what they do with players. Mm-hmm. I think they've looked at other things, other tangibles, you know, what's his worth ethic like? What's his heart like? What's his, because these guys have been able to emerge in a whole nother level. And I think they've got enough, enough in their, in their stockpiles to be able to kind of tweak, do set off a time, give him a little bit of time. I don't have to pay you. I can. You know what I mean? They've got I can a, find another one of you somewhere I can else. Find a, they've got mm-hmm. they've got a lot of that that they can do, and so I think they're in the best place. I think Phoenix is in trouble. Oh, big trouble! I think they're in trouble. I actually, think, actually, I'm gonna I'm gonna disagree. Phoenix is good. You know why? Why? They resigned Grayson Allen, contract extension. Oh, Phoenix is set. All they Here need. We go. Grayson uh, Allen. All Lakers are in year. trouble. Yes. Lakers are in trouble. Lakers in trouble. I think Sacramento is okay. Mm-hmm. I think they're okay right now. Need to find another level, but they can. Um, Portland is teetering, but mm. I just don't think they have enough to draw in to enhance what they have. And I don't think, I think they, 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 they were able to do something with the, you know, um, Lillard, you mm-hmm. know, that, that, that helped mm. them. Um, Washington's in trouble. Oof. 
Charlotte? Atlanta's in trouble. Charlotte doesn't know where to go. Detroit? Detroit's in trouble. Like, I thought they were on the verge, mm -hmm. but they, I, I have no clue. But San Antonio's going to be all right. Mm. You know, you when you have a, an anchor piece like that, um, you, you you better draft right. I don't think Pop has enough time. Right. They better figure out who's going to bring in the coach and, and to take it to the next level. If they miss on that, Wimby's out. Let me ask you this. Dallas is okay. Yeah, Dallas seems fine. Let me ask you this before we go to break and bring Jane for the crossover. Is San Antonio a powerful enough, respected enough organization to poach a sitting coach, or do they have to hire an assistant or promote from within? Like, could they go get Billy Donovan? Could they go get Danielle I'm, from, I'm, from I'm, OKC? I'm being honest. If I'm being honest, I think if they can pull it off, if they can get Pop to go maybe another two years, maybe. Maybe. If I'm them, I'm shooting at Ime Adoka. Because he's been there. He's already he's been there. Yeah. Heard a division rival. He's been there. And 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 you know, give him another couple years just to kind of let that stuff wash out. Because redemption is available to mm -hmm. all. I believe. Right. It needs to be. I believe it's available to all. And I think if he keeps his nose clean and he's not chasing after uh, executives wise, he'll be all right. Jante Porter's redemption coming in Europe. Jante Porter's done. Pray for that man, yeah. Because it's it, a it, it can, you know, ho it's a blessing. He's got a good brother. Like, uh, hopefully, you know, that relationship will be. If I'm his brother, maybe I try to hire him in one of my foundation, run my mm -hmm. something. Just keep be him my trainer. Keep him, keep him w without having to be connected to that and a far enough away. So I'm not being. If as long as I didn't do anything, I'm not attributed to anything. Yeah. But keep him close to you, so that way you don't. You know, because if he if he gets lost out there, and pray for him. Yeah, it's a lot. Yeah. Well, let's take a break. We'll bring in Jay Foreman to wrap up on block with a crossover after this. Several irrigation contractors in Lincoln go out of business every year, leaving sprinkler system orphans begging for service. The folks at Judson Irrigation shed a tear for these little fellas. They've been coddling these orphans for more than 40 years. From redesign, repairing, replacing, and restoring, remember the Judson Irrigation Orphanage. Call the Judson Irrigation Orphanage, 402-420-6277, or JudsonIrrigation.com. 24-7 threat monitoring, expert tech support, streamlined communications. Allo has a solution for that. Protect your business with Allo Business. Comprehensive firewall security, Microsoft Teams voice integrated communications, cybersecurity and IT support managed by experts. From productivity to peace of mind, Allo has a solution for that. Allo means business. Protect your business by visiting allofiber.com forward slash business. Rashawn Jackson here for Bauer Infrastructure, a veteran-owned local company proudly serving Lincoln, Lancaster County, and the surrounding areas. Bauer provides quality work at an affordable price, and they're growing rapidly. If you want to experience a career with a fast-paced, family-friendly environment, visit BauerInfrastructure.com. They have top-of-the-line benefits, year-round work, even through the winter. Bauer, usher in the new era of infrastructure to an area near you. And as always, go Big Red! Several irrigation contractors in Lincoln go out. Garage doors can be expensive. Are you keeping yours in the best condition possible? This is Cameron Hall with Doors Plus. Doors Plus is a locally owned business that prides itself on the fast, reliable, and friendly service. Doors Plus offers flexible scheduling so you can book an appointment that fits your busy day. My team and I will come out to your property, both commercial and residential, and provide you with the necessary information you need to make sure your garage door is in working and smooth condition. Give Doors Plus a call today at 402 590 5800 to book an appointment and learn more about our preventative maintenance plans. Doors Plus, garage doors, and more. Unearth the secret to long lasting tires at Treads Central Tire Pros, a league apart in commitment, service, and expertise. This isn't just about rubber meeting the road, but trust, safety, and surety converging in perfect harmony. This is where expectations are exceeded every time. 
Make your appointment today at Tread Central Tire Pros just south of Cortland on Highway 77 or visit our website to explore our services. Remember, when it comes to tires, choose Tread Central Tire Pros because we tread differently. At Doan University, we build leaders, and that means your success and achievements come first. At Doan University, your future is uniquely yours, and our world-class liberal arts education is just the beginning. We invite you to schedule your campus visit and experience why Doan University will start you on your journey to your future career. Learn more by scheduling your personal campus visit today at doan.edu slash visit. Now back to On the Block with Strick and Austin on 93.7 The Ticket and theticketfm.com. Back one final time here during On the Block. Don't worry, I'm not going to stir any trouble up or anything today. Not intentionally, at least. Jay Foreman <laughs> in the house. Jay, welcome in. What's up? Um, we will talk I feel some welcome West- today. Good. We will not, talk bomb- some- not bombarded. Because you want to know why? You want to know why I'm not bombarded? Because my man did his thing last night. You know what I'm saying? Let's talk some Western Conference basketball. Let's go to the other game before uh, I'm responsible for starting <laughs> World War III. Look at, look at, I mean, hey man, I could not. Let me tell you something, Strick. Let me tell you something. How does how hey. does somebody shoot more, two people shoot more free throws than the whole team? And they're you not. You got to go to the rack. You, you try to say Zion didn't go to the rack. He got 40 points. And then he, guess what he happened? He didn't shoot as many free throws yeah, as them. But guess what happened? He, he wasn't out of shape and that, that hand bone got into him. That ham bone. It's unbelievable, my boy. He needed to lean up. Get off that shrimp. Uh, I, uh, was it shrimp? Shrimp gumbo. Shrimp, shrimp gumbo. Etouffee. Yeah, too much. <laughs> Crawfish. Po' boys. Yeah. Gumbo. <laughs> All that King stuff. King cake. He, you know, he he looked like he liked them daiquiris down there, too. Because, uh, you know, they got the right, wet willies. Yeah, he got because you got the drive through <laughs> daiquiri places in New Orleans. All right, let's get down to business. Okay. Bronx. Kings Warriors. Kings yeah. Warriors. Kings take out the Warriors. Um, I'm sure we'll talk more about the game uh, mm-hmm. on Old School J. But I saw this tweet from uh, Brandon Anderson, who writes for uh, Action Network. He ranked players and personalities on the Warriors for their contributions to the dynasty. Okay, uh, Strick okay. and I pretty much agree that it's over. But at the top tier, the the biggest contributors to the Warriors' success: Steph Curry and Draymond Green. Does anyone else belong on their level in terms of contribution? Just just, just personalities. Just to the whole dynasty, holistically. Who? Um, Tier one, Steph and Dre. I would say Steve Kerr. Okay, Steve Kerr is at the top of tier two alongside Andre Iguodala. I like that. But I also think that Clay doesn't get enough credit because Clay's a leader behind the scenes. Okay. Um, No, number one, take this year out of it. Obviously, I find it hard. I just find it. I've watched. I mean, we've all watched Clay. He's one of the he's, game six Clay, especially. Yeah, but I mean, you take, I guess Steph Curry and Larry Bird. Those are two probably best shooters of all time. I mean, there's other guys, but let's just take them. Steph Curry's right there. I mean, that's the Curry. Clay, Clay Thompson's right there. So it's hard for me to imagine. There's not something else going on that has him distracted from being. The, you just don't forget these guys. I've, I've stricken up. NBA dudes can just not touch a ball and go out there and shoot the rock. And so, but so I think there's more more to the story there. I think that I think Clay doesn't get enough credit. But yeah, I guess if you think about it on the surface, he's a tier three guy. Stricky, you agree so far? As far as their success, right? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Tier three. One player in tier three, Kevin Durant. You got, where's Clay? Clay is in tier four with oh, Andrew no. Bogut and Kevon Looney. Yeah, that's disrespectful. That's just disrespectful. <laughs> I mean, that's just. I think flat. I might agree that's with just Jay dis- on that. That's just disrespectful, man. KD came in and rolled away. I it, might it, have to agree with it, him. He came in and rolled away and was out. Now, granted, Draymond, you know, <laughs> overstepped his boundaries. I mean, you know, we, we, we got people that work here to overstep their boundaries. But, you know, he's like Steph. He was out. This dude is the one of the original Splash Brothers. He's the one. It, it's those two that got the party started. Then Draymond all set up. And this is the guy that really needs to be in there is Mark Jackson needs to be in tier one. 
He was the one yeah. that's that set had, it in motion. That set he the it. one that rode the boat out of the he, out know, of the current. You know, it really. <laughs> you know who Mark? <laughs> he's you know who Mark Jackson yeah. is. He's Tony Dungy. He yeah. did all the work. work. Hey, he Tony took, won a Super Bowl. Not with Tampa Bay. We won it where it mattered. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah. But Mark Jackson ain't been able to get employed yet. Now, right. granted, there's other things that he can, or whatever. But anyways, you gotta think he built that team. He was the one that mm-hmm. he said, you know what. I'm not going to worry about your ankle, Steph Curry. I'm not going to worry about your size. What you and Clay can do is something that we're we're going to make the he, he took, Barry Switzer. He's the Barry is Kerr the Barry Switzer of uh, like, like with the cow like when Jimmy Johnson. No, nah, no, nah, because I think what Steve Kerr did, he brought a calmness and a and a uh-huh. his, his a winning pedigree. Winning pedigree. Yeah. He took everything he learned from Popovich, and then also he took he had a really good seat as a commentator. And he learned he learned the coaching game, and he and he got to interview a lot of coaches. He probably sitting across this dude. This dude ain't gonna leave. So he's taking things from, and he was great on Being TV, a GM. right? And then so he went in there and did that. So I think it was the right storm. But I think just Clay and Tier Four, that's just flat. It, with Andrew Bogut, I mean, come on, man. I mean, that's just <laughs> flat. That's just disrespect. That's the problem, right mm-hmm. there. Clay is just disrespected. Moving down the tiers, disrespect. Tier, tier I five, mean, dang. Sean Livingston, <laughs> uh, the Mitten. Leandro Barbosa and JaVale McGee. Here's the one that gets me. The, 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 the tier that gets me. Tier six, Bob Myers. Crazy on that one. Harrison Barnes, Andrew Wiggins, Jordan Poole, David Lee. Barnes, Barnes needs definitely to be needs to be more yeah. towards the middle of the pack. He maybe could be in the Bogut Looney category. Yeah. Bob Myers, GM. That, he needs to be he, up he, in he with Kurt. Be, Yeah, he needs to be up there in like two or three. Yeah. That's the way I see it. I mean, you got to think he constructed that team of not of Livingston, Eagle Dollar, Bogut. He was uh, Lee. He had he had the idea. He had such a deep team. He somehow he was getting dudes. He had a parental all star, Lee Philly, and mm-hmm. say, look, man, I need you to come off the bench. Yeah. And then he changed the mindset to turn it from um is like they went from there. They were non-traditional. They were one of the non-traditional teams that were able to have success right. by way of not necessarily having a big man. So discussions to keep Looney and not go out there and chase an NB type right. or go back to traditional ways. They stayed non-traditional. And I think those are decisions that Bob Meyer Myers had to make. And also to keep that squad together when, he could have, and this is why he left this last time, though, because he mm-hmm. knew that decision was just, oh, I can't, I can't do it. I love him too much. I care, but I don't want to make a heart decision and, and right. do something didn't, that could hurt the team. He didn't want to have to cut right. one mm-hmm. of the guys that that he right. that he you know cared for, and that's a big, um, you know, that's a, that's a commendable by him. But also, you got to think what what Bob Myers is. They, I wouldn't say they chased the NB type. They got the guy. They had Looney that, that was kind of like your guarantee guy. And then they let JaVel McGee go, but then they got uh, Wiseman, and it just didn't work out. But guess what he did? He, he, you know what? He said, you know what? It just didn't work out. It's not going to work out. So we're going to cut bait, and then we're going to win. An- then we're going to win another championship. Mm-hmm. So that lets you know that that whole organization is yeah. Because he went and got Wiggins, yeah, which was <laughs> huge at that time was huge, right? right huge because they, they got him for dang. They're not not a crazy right. loss either. And mm-hmm. then also he he held mm-hmm. his they, they like when uh, Steph was hurt and Clay was you know those two years he was out. Well, they went and got D'Angelo Russell and kind of u- used him for a little bit, upped his status, go to Minnesota. I mean, every move he made was spot on. Was spot on. Mm-hmm. And it was all about winning. And yeah. I mean, from the getting the new arena, all that stuff. He was doing everything. I mean, it's it's more it's it's strategic, but it's his mindset, though. Mm-hmm. It's a winning mindset. And that just went right down to the team. But they Clay just will never get the type of credit. They'll, they'll miss Clay when he's gone. Barbosa is at the bottom because Barbosa is out there getting with people's wives, man. Barbosa at the bottom, man. Shit, I can't, I can't do it. Barbosa was, yo, man, what's up? No, I'm just, yeah. <laughs> no, but he did. I mean, Barbosa, Barbosa, Barbosa was Brazilian wild. blur. Wait, Barbosa, Brazilian blur. <laughs> what, I mean, he was like at the end of the quarter type of dude. He ain't like. Nah, he wasn't the main main. He wasn't yeah. the main dude. Come up because you know what you. Would what think about he, like most mates? What, what, well, I mean, what about yeah? That's no. What about like uh, Gary Payton II? I mean, yeah, he was him. on there. He okay. was mm-hmm. in the Sean Livingston tier with Barbosa okay. and Javale. Okay, yeah, okay. Well, I like the that. Uh, yeah. So I mean, it's. I mean, it's. 
David Lee, to me, didn't live up to all-star status that he was in New York. So that's why I like where he's at. Yeah. Yeah. And it was, was it Lee or Bogut that got benched for Draymond to start? Probably Bogut. Bogut was Bogut was yeah. injured then. Remember, he was very he was very like brittle back then. He yeah. was if they would have got Andrew Bogut when he was in his prime, they would have been. With them. But he, he 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 was he was uh he did his thing in key moments though. Yes, but I'm saying yeah. where you know when he was healthy early in his career, he was a problem because yeah. he because he had that edge. he had that a little bit of a Stephen Adams, but he had more offensive game. Yeah, and in, you know by the time he got him, it was you know he was injury prone. But he was a big he was a big influence, man. Okay, just because I can't resist, I have to throw this out there. What? LeBron to Golden State or Steph to Los Angeles? What next year? Next offseason? Yeah, I, I'm not going off-season. to Golden State personally. I think I wouldn't go. Not 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 in rebuild mode. Name Lakers is Lakers is closer. They're, oh, oh, Golden State's about to be in rebuild you, mode. You think, they got to blow it up. They're gonna have to. They. They 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 have too much in salary. They're over the salary cap, and they they have players that are not necessarily given. They're not going to probably give up Steph. He's probably a lifer. You've got Draymond for another three years on dang near a max high, contract, yeah. high yeah. high value contract. You got Clay's gone, so Clay's the gone. gone. You're going to get that money. No, that's what I'm saying. You got you still got way too much money tied up. So you. And you're still kind of in the mid tier for draft. You're not necessarily in the lottery. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. But that's why you. And you had to give up stuff just to get rid of your boy, your boy, Jordan Poole. Because you had to give away stuff to get rid of him. You wasn't able to get. You wasn't able to get what like Portland was able to get for Damian Lillard, or you know what I'm saying. You. You know, then you sign Chris Paul, but his money will go off. So you, you know, you'll be good. I mean, you, 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 you're in rebuild mode, but you're not, you're not, you're not anywhere next to making another level move. So I, if I'm LeBron, I'm not going up to Golden State. You must work. You might come down here and get with me. You think they they bring a drink? Who are they? Clay? You know, they 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 Draymond's fanboy. They homies. They, you know what I'm saying? So you could probably trade Draymond to to the Lakers and then sign Clay too. You probably could. Because you can get Clay on a cheap cheap. But don't you already have Clay and Austin Reeves? Yeah. And Austin Reeves yeah, is not Clay, very, but younger, yeah, you know, yeah, similar ish yeah. role. And, 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 you know, they paid Hachimura. They, so, yeah, they're in trouble salary cap wise, too. So I don't know if they have the money to they do it. I don't even Anthony think they Davis. have the money to take. They would have to get rid of. Now, they got they got the means by if they trade D'Angelo Russell, send him back up there. Yeah. But does Golden State want that? They've seen that New- picture. I don't know. So it's it's crazy. It's a lot out there. I just don't know if that if it works with that combination. Jay, what's coming up on old school? Man, they just got the they just got the AOK man for unlimited transfer portals. Man, that means there's <laughs> going to be no more reunions for these guys. These dudes get to transfer every year. This I just saw it. Ta-da. I'm dumbfounded right now, yeah. bro. Yeah, like, as long as, long as you're on good academic out. standing, Whoever, whoever's in bat, here this year, they might it, be out again. Just, bat, really? just bat, basket weaving one on one. Just keep taking it. As long as you're on your way to graduate with uh, whatever degree it is that you you can get an online Phoenix degree. criminal justice one on one. Hey, man. I mean that that's the big news. Then we got the, we'll we'll, we'll kind of you know obviously go over mm. the uh, Matt Rule presser and, and uh, when he was talking about you know his thoughts from the scrimmage, and then of course we'll recap. Bron Bron last night and uh the Kings put the dagger in the heart, Ooh. man. I I felt bad for Clay, man. He just went 0 for 10. Bro, you couldn't hit the broad side of the barn. You Boy. couldn't even get to the rack. Boy. Couldn't hit water if you fell out of a boat. Yeah. It's too bad. Too bad. Uh, not too right, bad. Though. Then Kansas City Royals won game one, four two over the White Sox. Salvador President Hunter Renfro Homer will be on stream again for old school. So make sure you are still tuned in on Facebook, YouTube, Twitch, Twitter, or Allo Channel 961. We'll be right back with Old School here in just a couple of minutes. Your business runs like a well-oiled machine. It's important that your actual machines do too. Stern is here to make sure you don't have to worry about that. They provide solutions for heavy equipment and automotive fuels, lubricants, and equipment guard options. And with Stern's commitment to customer service for the past 40 years, you know you have a partner to help support your operations for years to come. Contact Roger at Stern Company by calling 1-800-477-2744 or visit them online at stern.co. Stern Company. 